Hey there, NavyDoc5184 here. Welcome to my next reaction to Star Wars The Acolyte. We're getting into episode three titled Destiny. And so far I'm really enjoying this series. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, for the first couple episodes, I usually have pretty low expectations, um, but I would say probably my age. I grew up in the day where sometimes it could take an entire series, I mean not a series, but an entire season for a series that kind of start to find its footing and everything and that's usually kind of the approach I try to take when watching new shows because you know it kind of takes some time especially when you're introduced to new characters so you know you kind of you know takes a little bit to learn them kind of see what they're all about and everything especially th with this one where there's so much backstory involved with it so the first two episodes I usually want to try to you know keep low expectations just so i can kind of see what's going on here i like the fact that they're actually raising a lot of questions that i suspect are going to start getting answered in episode three and i do expect things to kind of start to pick up especially since that there is only eight episodes in this so i do expect that we're probably going to start getting some answers things are probably going to start picking up I'm definitely very curious to see uh, what happens between um, Osha and May now that they both know that they're still alive and clearly on opposite sides of the playing field. So very interested to see how that goes. I really want to know what happened on, um, you know, their home planet that made May want to kill the, these four particular Jedi so badly. Uh, I hope that's something that we get into. And also... The main thing that I really noticed on here is this really feels like that this is probably, I guess you could say, the start of the fall of the Jedi in a way. Even though this is set 100 years before Episode 1, in a, in a way, it almost kind of takes me to um, Episode 8, The Last Jedi, where Luke was talking to Rey about the Jedi and basically talking about how everybody like has this false sense of... Um, I think he said that they're like deified and really uh, Luke himself was saying if you really strip all that away you'll see you know that they're basically you know full of like hubris hypocrisy you know and um, basically you know they in a way they lost their way and in a way I kind of see this going here and it really kind of makes sense for a lot of the Jedi who either left or were disillusioned. I mean, you think about um, in Ahsoka, Balin's skull, how he was talking about how he missed the idea of the Jedi Order, but he said not the truth and the weakness. And I think this is what we're seeing because you saw how, you know, uh, Master, I think, for the life of me, her name always escapes me. It's like Velestra, but how she was so initially concerned with making sure that their acts were quick and swift otherwise their political enemies could use the idea of a former um jedi padawan killing a jedi master which we found out that wasn't the case but then even though now at the end of episode two where soul wants to go to apparently what we now know as a uh, kofar and Lestra wants them to come back and discuss it and i'm sitting there kind of like yo i'm like what is there to discuss you know where she's gonna go if you really need to have some discussions, have your discussions there, but let Soul and company go over there and try to, you know, prevent another Jedi getting killed. So that right there also shows that they're definitely really losing their way. They're thinking way too, I guess you could say, political in a way. And it's just crazy how all that is really kind of starting to show what Luke himself was saying so many years you know in the future trying to show that the jedi weren't as great as they were even i here said you know it's like i find myself wondering if i'm even gonna like the jedi in here though i do have to say i really like soul a lot i get a lot of qui-gon jinn vibes from him but i think the thing i like the most and something that i actually kind of noticed is you notice how in the like even in the prequel movies but how quickly you know, the Jedi and everybody are so quick to pull out their lightsabers, even in just self-defense. Whereas here, Soul hasn't pulled out his lightsaber yet. 
and um you know and dara didn't pull it out until she had knives thrown at her all that time they're you know doing basic like martial arts and everything which is actually something i really kind of like i like the idea that i guess they're trying to show that the jedi weren't always so ready you know to attack you know with you know their weapon you know i guess in a way it's kind of like a you know try to de-escalate the situation first you know it's kind of like uh what's there's like a term i don't remember what the saying is but basically it's just you know was the right tool for the right job obviously if you don't need to use your lightsaber don't pull it out but either which way so far i'm really enjoying uh the series i'm interested to see where it goes from here I expect things to pick up and hopefully we'll get some answers in terms of the backstories and everything. So uh, we shall go ahead and get started with the episode and let's go ahead and do it. Hey there, thanks for stopping by and I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the content and would like to give some extra support to the channel, feel free to check the description for various ways to do so. Some which will include an affiliate link to Dubby, uh, which you use, you get a 10% off your order. And also a link to my merch store, which is constantly running promotions and deals, as well as a link to my Patreon page, which you can get exclusive perks and content. Naturally, liking the video and leaving a comment helps as well. Thanks again and enjoy the video. Oh, looks like we're gonna get some answers here. Already, okay. The Bunta tree's so beautiful, but Elsha, it's dangerous. Only if we eat it. I don't wanna do the ascension. It's just a ceremony. Besides, we'll do it together. Come on. How many times have I told you it is not safe out here? Sorry, Mother Coral. There will be consequences for breaking the uh, rules. I'm old enough to go outside the fortress walls. The rules are for your safety. Uh, Darth Maul vibes, anyone? What the? Okay. My sweet girls must have sweet treats. Don't you think so, Coral? <laughs> okay, so what's the dynamic here? Meet me in the common room for your training session. I wonder who that actress is. She looks really familiar. I told you this planet would be safe haven for our coven. Hmm? It's not going to stay safe if Osha keeps running away. Are they witches? A thread woven through all of existence. Some call it a force and claim to use it. But we know the thread is not a power you wield. <laughs> They're the twins in the back just push each other. Pay attention. Stop distracting me. No. <laughs> Your enemies will not warn you before they attack you. Wow. Okay. What is going on? Excellent, May. Okay, so why did May defend, but Osha did not? I don't want to do the ascension. But that's how we become witches. Okay, so I was right. I don't know if I want to be a witch. Of course you want that. No, you want that. Girls. That was explained a little bit with Osha and probably why she wasn't able to complete uh, Jedi trials. Or her Jedi training. I wouldn't say this is exactly the same training as Jedi training, but... Don't be afraid, Oshi. Ascension is about... Walking through fear. You think you want something different than life in this coven. But that is because you are young. The galaxy is not a place that welcomes women like us. You and your sister are special, Osha. I want you to stay special. 
I'm not gonna lie, I feel like I'm seeing a lot of parallels between uh these people and the Jedi. It's interesting though that they refer to the force as a thread. What are you drawing? Stop! Don't look. It isn't fair. I share everything with you. I want to have my own things. Don't you wonder what could be out there besides Brendock? Everything I need is here. We were hunted, persecuted, forced into hiding, all because some would consider our power dark, unnatural. I could be tripping. I'm getting some serious Sith vibes with this, even though they all talk about being witches and everything. But just the one word. Unnatural. Palpatine liked to use that word quite a bit. Do you vow upon my death to continue our legacy? I do. All right, so what about Osh? Okay. Osha does not look invested in this. You can tell her heart is not in this. Do you vow upon my death to protect the secrets of our coven and continue our legacy? I do. Mother! What the? They've sliced the platform. Eh? They will be here any moment. I am Master Indara, and these are my colleagues. Sol, Kelnaka, and my Padawan, Torben. I am Anasea, okay. mother of this coven. We are concerned that you are training children. There are no children here. <laughs> Kanaka knows. Kanaka senses them. They want to take our children. Jedi do not take children. Hold your tongue, or I cut it out for you. Don't do it. No. Is this supposed to be some sort of peace offering, or what? I think you would make a very good Jedi, Yosha. Uh. Mama, I want to show them what you taught me. Please let me take the test. Mother Anasea, you cannot deny that Jedi have the right to test potential Padawans. With your permission, of course. Okay. All right, I'm a little confused here. Republic laws prevent them from training children. Now they're trying to take them to test them to see if they can be trained. What's going on? That doesn't make sense. Osha wants to do it. I did not bring the girls into this world so we could lose them to a bunch of deranged monks. It is not your decision. It is mine. I carried them. I don't know what they will ask you, but... Whatever's in your heart, you must say the opposite. Not gonna lie, not quite sure what I'm feeling about this right now. Not gonna lie, Osha is kind of proven to be quite an interesting character to me. I kind of like the theme that's kind of going with her. You know, kind of like the... I guess say the pressure to do what is expected of you. Versus... Doing what you really want to do, or being what you really want to be. Hi. Does she know how to speak Wookiee? Do all Jedi's get one of those? After much training, yes. Ow. What are you doing? I was just taking a blood sample. Well, we know what that sample is for. This looks familiar. A spaceship. Correct. How about this next one? Hey, no. They're tricking a her. A mountain. Correct. That wasn't a mountain. Gotcha. 
Did someone tell you to fail this test? Your family doesn't want to be separated from you. What do you want, Usha? Is this how... Is this how everything went down? I want to be a Jedi. Then you must have the courage to tell the truth. We should continue the test. This is where it all goes downhill and probably why May wants those four dead. That man used his Jedi mind tricks on her. No, he didn't. I told him I wanted to be a Jedi because I do. You I don't want to be a witch. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Go and take a walk, May. <laughs> take a walk with Mother Coral. But now! Mama! What's wrong with you? Mama! Listen to me. You get to make a choice, Osha. If you want to pull the thread, then pull it. I'll never see you again. You won't. I was almost expecting her to pull a Shmi Skywalker there. Will I ever see you again? What does your heart tell you? I do appreciate the fact, though, that even though you can tell she's clearly against this, though, that she is willing to support Osha with this. I must discuss the situation with everyone here. But we will consider your wish when we do so. I love you, Mama. I love you. It does kind of pull on a very interesting dynamic, one that I'll have to touch on later if I remember to do so. I won't let you leave. It's not up to you. You can't stop me. Yes, I can. How? I'll kill you. Take him back! What? Um, um, oh hell, oh hell, okay, uh, what is it, yes, yes, calm is good. It's already got great mechanical skills for her age. That fire is spreading really quick. So that's why May thought Osha was dead. Uh, what the? Whoa! Help me! Wow! So May wipe them all out? You can't. You. There is no saving her, Ocha. You gotta go. Okay. So earlier, when they're talking about how they saw May fall, that's what they're talking about. Wow. So May was the one who did all that, all because she didn't want Osha to become a Jedi. Wow. So I'm guessing she blamed the four Jedi for. Taking Osha away. Even though it was clear long before Osha wanted to go, but I still want to know who it was who found May and trained her. What happened? 
They started a fire. We have to go back. Oh my God. We must. You'll be safe on Crescent. And if you wish, you'll train us by bottle. Oh. You're going to be okay, Ocean. You will never feel like this again. Okay? Uh, that's a dangerous promise. So she somehow survived the fall. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right, y'all. That was Star Wars The Acolyte Episode 3 Destiny. And that was an interesting episode. I'm not going to lie. For the first bit of it, I wasn't really feeling it. But then as it kind of went along, uh, pardon the pun, but it felt like some threads were coming together. Um, the whole thing with the witches at first kind of got me. I mean, it's clear they have a strong mistrust of the Jedi. I would love some backstory on that. And at first, that was one of those things where I was just like, in my head, I was just like, eh, I don't know. But then I kind of came to think about uh, Star Wars Ahsoka, and it could be a completely different coven. I don't know. But I just found it interesting how if they have such strong feelings against the Jedi, they talk about the thread, aka the Force, which obviously they have you know their own uses for in a way probably use it differently than the jedi and would probably be more in tune with the sith um but you know because like i said i was kind of getting some sith vibes in there but you know like i was thinking about the witches in ahsoka and how they're so devoted to um you know grand admiral thrawn which really when you kind of think about it, it really kind of makes a ton of sense why they would join with somebody who you know would go against you know obviously the rebellion because you know when we think of the rebellion we think a lot about you know people like ahsoka luke leia you know strong force users you know you know who are jedi or trained to be as jedi naturally they would want to go against something like that uh, you throw in sabine ezra in there as well and um Oh crap, what was, um, wow, his name just completely left me. Uh, he, I know he was on Rebels, he was the father of Jason, but we know he was a Jedi, um, you know, Ezra's master, good lord. You know what's funny is as soon as I stop recording, the name's gonna pop right in my head, that's how it always seems to work with this kind of thing, but, so, but it's like, once I kind of started piecing those together, it made this a little easier to swallow. Um, I'm still really want to know who it was who found may because that's going to answer another really big question because obviously may has a lot of hate for these four particular jedi now they're the ones that were there but i think about what may said when she uh met with indara when indara said that you know they don't pull their weapons you know against the unarmed and may very defiantly said yes you do and I'm looking at that and the only time any of the Jedi pulled their weapons out was to hand it to Osha. It was not in an attack or anything like that. So I really don't know. I feel like that whoever it was that eventually finds Mei and trains her had to have done something in her mind and this whole time she's thinking she killed Osha. But now that she knows Osha is alive, what does that do for their relationship now? And the fact that even as children, they had different views of the Jedi. Now, I will say this, like I said, at the very beginning of this, I really, really was not really feeling the episode, but then it's kind of like once I started putting some of the threads together, again, sorry for the pun, but, you know, started putting things together a little bit and kind of trying to put, you know, pieces in place. I actually did start to grow to get into the episode. It was one of those where it's like you kind of have to be patient with it. Um, I will say it was a little less, I should say, action packed than I thought, but I actually kind of appreciated the fact that they actually dedicated a whole episode to what happened on Brendog. You know, I'm sure that 
you know, maybe some people would have preferred, you know, that maybe they just do like a quick story time on that. But I think I really like the idea of them doing a whole episode of it because we got to see quite a few dynamics. Like, you know, the whole idea, you know, that these, um, you know, the witches were in exile, you know, and they came there for safety and they basically were just really dependent on each other. And almost like Luke in A New Hope, where he sought for something more, Osha was seeking for something more. But then you got May, who was the type where it's just like, no, this is where our life is. This is where we must, you know, plant ourselves. You know, so you had the butting of the heads that early on. And then seeing that May was so determined to make sure that Osha wouldn't leave, that she would rather kill her own sister than see her leave. But not only that, she killed every i mean and then that's what really confuses me is why did may go as far as to kill the coven when i would say everybody except for their mom you know um oh it started with an a because i know you got the one who created them and then the other one who carried them but you know the the one that starts with an a who was I guess you could say going to support Osha no matter what decision she made. I could see why May would have maybe killed her is because she was in a way promoting Osha leaving. But I don't know about why everybody else. That's what doesn't make sense to me. And maybe that's something I will get. Uh, let's see here. This was episode three. So I'm going to make a guess and say episode five or six is where we get that question answered. If we get it answered at all, I don't know. But. You know, it's just with all that extra story, that's why I kind of appreciate that there's like a whole episode dedicated to that backstory. I feel like maybe, well, no, I, th I think it's probably rightfully placed at three. I could see an argument uh, for it being put in two, but I think having it in episode three, I think that works fine in terms of placement of how they're doing this. Um, but the other thing that I did like, you know, was the whole idea where it's like, you could tell that the mother was really really want Osha to go with the Ascension and everything but yet she was still going to support her you know, she was still going to support Osha because I think she really understood that I mean it's again she kind of said you know like today you might you know you want to be a Jedi now but that could change later but I don't think she really took into full consideration that the same could have been said for May. You know, maybe she wanted to be a witch then, but how do we know that five years down the road she wouldn't want to be a Jedi? Now, granted, at that point, there's no way the Jedi would probably take her, so it really wouldn't matter anyways, but what would have happened if, you know, May had a change of heart, uh, you know, later on down the road? But either which way, I, I gotta say, like I said, started off slow, Turned out to be an okay episode. I definitely wouldn't say it's one of the best. Definitely one of those episodes where I'm probably going to be skipping a lot of parts just to see certain parts. You know, I was definitely very curious to see how everyone was going to play a role in there. You know, and uh, Torben, you know, in episode two, when he was talking about how they thought they were doing the right thing. I think that kind of goes by something where I am still kind of really confused about and really would like to find some explanation on is how... They're talking about how it's against Republic law to train children, and yet they're going to take children and train to become Jedi. I'm like, what's the difference? But and I think that's part of the, maybe that's the hubris part of the Jedi, where they feel they're the only ones who use the Force the right way, whereas I think the Coven had kind of like an idea where it's not just a power to yield, but I think Soul in, ep in the first episode kind of hit it how... The Force is a power that must be respected. And I feel like the Jedi as a whole lost sight of that. And you kind of even got that in um, in The Last Jedi, Episode 8, when um, Luke was asking Rey about the Force. You know, and you know Luke had to kind of tell her that it's not, you know, for one side or the other. You know, it is really in the end a matter of how you use it, but the force itself is not meant to be used by the good and against the bad per se. I forget exactly how it was worded on there, but you can see like Ray's thinking with that, how it kind of matches with what the Jedi here are thinking. And 
it's really such a shame because it's like that mindset by itself is probably what really I mean there's so many things you can point out where the Jedi started going wrong and you got people like Soul you know who clearly is seeing like you know obviously something's not right about that uh, obviously Count Dooku himself uh, you know back in the day well I shouldn't say back in the day because technically he's after um, you know about how he was starting to get disillusioned because he was kind of seeing you know all that and even Qui-Gon Jinn with his um, I guess you say squabbles with the Jedi Order you know it's just things like that where people are seeing it but you know they're just so blind in their own status that you know it by the time they realized what was going on it was too late and I, I like the fact that we're really really seeing the seeds planted here because like I said early on you can tell and it's just like having that go on for a hundred years you know that it only gets worse and you know it's kind of I don't want to say cool but it is definitely interesting seeing the seeds planted with that so um overall not a bad episode is a pretty solid episode uh definitely has me uh, you know ready to see where this story goes and seeing how the rest of this um story goes uh, once again who was it that found may who is it that's training her uh was it somebody else on the planet that you know we just didn't see here but Either which way, I think I'm just going to leave it there. For Thank you guys for uh, stopping by. Feel free to check out some of my other Star Wars reactions over there. And uh, I will catch you all down the road.